Hello, good morning, good evening from around the world. Uh, we're very excited uh, for the latest and the greatest instalment, uh, or the latest instalment of Master Your Migration by uh, Workflow Max by Blue Rock. Um, this is a customer information webinar. We're very excited and uh, we'll just give everyone a moment to get settled and then we'll get things underway. I know there's, there are a few people joining in on today's webinar, which is very exciting. Yeah, it's quite the, quite the list there, Ryan, which, yeah. is, which is great to see. So, yeah, there's a couple hundred participants piling in the door as we speak. Uh, but, yeah, numbers are looking pretty good there. So I think we can probably uh, get things underway and kick off. There's yeah. lots to, lot to get through today. Fantastic. Uh, now, our faces might be quite familiar to many of you who have already joined us in a webinar uh, previously. But for those that haven't, my name's Ryan. I'm the Head of Growth and Partnerships at Workflow Max by Blue Rock. And I'm Chris. I'm Head of Product at Workflow Max by Blue Rock. Wonderful. Let's get things underway. So just a quick little, uh, a little bit of housekeeping, if you will. We are going to be recording today's session and you will get uh, not only a recording, but a slide pack uh, after the, the web webinar has concluded, probably 24 to 48 hours after the event. Uh, so don't worry too much about madly writing down notes and, uh, and the likes. Uh, it'll all be nicely bundled up for you as a, a nice bit of collateral and reference for you to lean in on. Uh, quite an extensive agenda today. We do have a lot to get through. Now, just a heads up that um, we're going to do a lot of the talking through these items today, but as part of that slide pack, you'll get actual slides with content and detail to complement. Uh, so don't don't fear if you're um, if we're talking, you're not seeing all yeah, those uh, slides. Clear, we'll, yeah, we'll send through that afterwards. Exactly. Great. So I, I'm not even going to go line by line through this one. Uh, the really key exciting element, though, is going to be the live migration demo that we take you through today. Of course, as always, we're going to try and save as much time as possible for a live Q and A at the end. But with that being said, let's get things underway. Let's do it. So. First and foremost, there's a there's a big bold number there. We are 13 <laughs> days to go. It's kind of hard to believe. It has been a, a huge 11 months for us, uh, supported by, of course, uh, the existing customers of Workflow Max by Blue. Uh, sorry, by Zero, uh, as well as our um, esteemed partnership community, who have all been chiming in and helping out and providing all the really valuable feedback along the way. But uh, 21 February, 12 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time is when we will be opening up the gates. And of course, for those that aren't quite aware, uh, the migration period as such will be open from that date all the way through till the 26th of June. So you do have plenty of time, never fear. Uh, you're, in, you're gonna be in safe hands and there's lots of opportunity to get your ducks in a row and get prepared for the migration. But of course, today is a good opportunity to see it in action and uh, just get that extra comfort and confidence with what's to come. That's right. So I think, Ryan, with our launch uh, for those customers over in the UK, if they're really keen, one in the morning, if they stay <laughs> up, you know, that's when we'll be live. You can sign up for that trial and get going. Uh, so for those of you in the UK tonight online, if you want to stay up to 1 a.m. on the, you know, that'll be the 21st at 1 a.m., by all means, that uh, that sign up for a account will be there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think we might al almost have to donate a little prize to the our first uh, UK sign up at that That's hour. Absolutely. I think that, that would be a, a good show of good commitment. Um, a nice little quick update uh, over the Christmas break. We did have our latest iteration of the website go live. Uh, that includes a great deal of content, uh, which the team has been working furiously around the clock to, to build and deliver in time for our go live. There's also the updated partner directory as well. So uh, for those that aren't quite aware, we do have quite an extensive uh, partner community that you can reach out to uh, who can provide that optional but highly valued uh, support, direction, advice, and I guess more, uh, more crudely, just that rolling up the sleeves uh, by way of support and helping you to get it done. Uh, we'll talk more about that in, uh, in a moment, but um, I think it might be worthwhile just quickly touching on our beta. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Galti, how, uh, how has that progressed and what are some of the highlights? Yeah, so I, I think, Ryan, um, you know, beta's progressed really well. Um, we've had lots of feedback from, you know, mm -hmm. existing customers, implementation partners who have been there on the journey for the past five, some 10, almost 15 years, I think. Long time. Yeah. Um, so we've had plenty of great feedback there. Um, you know, those of you who have been with Workflow Max for quite some time know how intricate some of those features and settings can be. Uh, and, you know, turning something on over here and something off yeah. over there can have a different impact. So 
Um, we're just trying to get all of those intricacies lined up and correct so that, you know, when you migrate across, your new home's just as familiar as it was in the in the old world. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're going through and, and touching things up right before uh, that go live. But, yeah, things have progressed really well. You know, we've yeah. got 99% of all those fundamental core features working, um, which has been great. So, yeah, we're just uh, working on some of those integrations and other things, but I'll, I'll get to that through the product yeah. update a bit later as well. Yeah, excellent. And for some of the uh, participants on today's webinar who have been involved in the beta program, uh, a big thank you from us. Uh, your feedback and support is invaluable and a, a key part of our future success and, and the direction that we take. So thank you for your, um, your inputs. Let's keep moving. Uh, so a quick little uh, recast of the roadmap and key dates. As I mentioned, uh, 21 February is marked for go live. 26th of June is the ultimate sunset of Workflow Max by Zero. So nice open uh, few months to, to hit the button on the migration. Uh, and it's, uh, look for what it's worth, uh, it's quite exciting and uh, a nice little uh, recognition of just how far we've come in such a, uh, well, conceivably short time, uh, but good things are happening. And uh, like Golti said, we are, we are prepped and primed and just putting on the final polish uh, ready for your um, invitation in. Let's keep moving. Sure. Uh, so now for the uh, real, um, well, the showcase, what we're here for today, yeah. uh, preparing for migration. So just before we get started, just recognizing that this is obviously quite a hot topic. Um, and I know there are all sorts of, um, you know, uh, levels of interest and uh, questioning and wanting to get this clear and really, um, uh, you know, just by way of confidence uh, in your preparedness for what is to come. The good thing is, and I, I hope this doesn't come across arrogantly, but what we are going to show you today is an actual live demonstration. This is the, the real deal. Uh, so we're very excited to share it with you and um, instill that knowledge, awareness, and confidence. Um, but uh, we should get it underway. Yeah, let's do it. So I think I think where we wanted to start, Ryan, as well, was you know with preparing for migration. Mm. Um, you know the customer base at the moment will be familiar with the current product. So what are some things you you can do or you should be considerate of? before you actually start. Um, so what I might do is I'm gonna flick over into the existing product over here in my demo account. Um, so hopefully all of you can see that on the call, we've switched over into that screen. Um, and one of those things that you need to consider when you're going to move across to the new product is making sure that the user account, the login that you use to facilitate migration when you log in, it's got the right permissions to actually, you know, take that data and bring it across. So that's one thing you can check before migration begins. And we'll revisit these points and recap them afterwards, uh, as well as send them through in the slide deck. Um, so don't worry about remembering these, these points that we're going to raise. Um, but one of those things is going into the staff section in your account. Um, you can go down to whichever login you're using. So in this account, I think I'm using this tech admin one. So what I want to check before I actually start migration is go through my privileges. And I want to look at my admin privileges, make sure those are all ticked off in full. So if I tick off that full option, that should tick off all these boxes for me. And then down the bottom, that API access privileges, that's another one we want to tick off to authorize any third-party access to actually let us get that data and bring it into your new account. Um, so if those two are all ticked off, uh, you're good to go there in terms of actually facilitating the migration. Um, another thing that some of you might want to consider doing is turning on your WIP lock or your financials lock. Um, a, a lot of you will be familiar with this setting already to prevent your users or your staff from actually entering financial data post-closure of a particular period. Um, so this will be useful in the sense that once you start migration, um, if you don't want people entering in data in the old account while that's happening, you want to wait and then get everyone into the new one so that you know we're, we're ultimately comparing apples to apples between the two accounts. We don't have any discrepancies. Um, that's something we're recommending that would be a good idea to do. We can lock our WIP here with the WIP lock date. We can lock the period as well so users can't add you know, any invoices from that point in time um, or timesheet entries, right? So in your organization settings, in your existing account, you can go to your lock dates and just turn those on uh, to prevent any sort of unwanted entry after you've started your final migration, you know, yeah. when you're migrating across. Yeah. S since you brought up the, the topic, I'll you mm. know, with respect to a final migration, mm. just a quick little side note, we're actually going to allow you to run the migration as many times as you would like. And you might wonder why on earth would we mm. do that? Um, quite simply put, we want to give you the opportunity, as it's appropriate, of course, 
to not only activate a new trial, but run your migrated data and then do all the testing checks and balances uh, that, that are suitable for you. Um, and of course, given that that might take some days or possibly even a couple of weeks, um, of course, by running the migration for a second time, you'll get the latest and most up-to-date account of the data or up till that point in time, and, and that will then flow across into it. A little bit more detail on that in a moment uh, and a, a few little pointers to watch out for. Yeah, but, definitely definitely a good point, Ryan. Yeah. Think, um, yeah, to bring up. And, and when we go through that migration, we can speak a little bit more to that as well yeah. with, with the data that's coming through. Perfect. Yeah. So really, uh, Galti, this is about drawing a nice, clean line in the sand. Right. Uh, now, we should also probably talk about the collaboration manager sure. as, as an extra. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. So under jobs, if you are using collaboration manager, for those of you who aren't familiar with this part of Workflow Max, it's an area that you can actually, you know, send emails into Workflow Max mm -hmm. and you can file those away against jobs, against clients, against leads uh, to be able to track those as notes against your the relevant areas of the product and also send through documents as well, which are attached to those emails. Um, the collaboration manager, you know, what you might want to do is just clear out this email address. This will just prevent any emails that come through, you know, they're no longer going to have a place in your account. So you're not going to end up with notes or documents attached to anything in your existing account because there's no more email address there for them to go to. Um, what you can do is as soon as you get access to the new account, you can add in that new email address. And then when people start sending, they'll get received in the new one. Mm. It's just, again, to create, uh, to remove mm. any, any area where there might be a discrepancy going, hey, why is there a note against this job in the old one, but not the new one? Yeah. So turning off collaboration manager by sort of getting rid of that email address will just prevent any confusion yeah. with why something might be different. Yeah. Right? And I think it's worth calling out also that um, there won't be essentially any bounce back function no. for your suppliers or mm. third parties who are emailing in. So it is worthwhile sending out a, a group email or something of that magnitude, which informs them that this email address is no longer relevant. Mm -hmm. And in a moment on the other side, we'll show you what the new email address is to uh, get them to update in their accounts. Definitely. Um, the other one, Ryan, is just, uh, of course, uh, a big one for a lot of people who are integrated is disconnecting from zero. So if you've got Xero connected for your accounting financial reporting, you can jump into your Xero settings. And over here under options, you've got a couple options there. Um, so one of those is disconnect from Xero, and the other is disconnect and delete Xero settings. Um, what we're re recommending here is just simply to disconnect. Um, don't delete those settings just in case you need to reconnect and revisit them, and you'd like them to stay there with your default you know, income account, cost of sale account. Uh, you know, your invoice settings of how those actually export across to zero uh, for your purchase orders, your bills there, how those come across as well. Um, we just don't want you to lose any of that information. Uh, so if you go and disconnect, if you happen to reconnect to zero, all of that will still be there the next time you reconnect. Um, so we're recommending to use that first one, um, but you do want to take note of what your settings are so that when you reconnect in your new account, um, you can simply go and fill in those fields very easily. Going yeah, forward. and it's pretty much a replication of, of what is. Exactly. And of course, we'll show you that in a moment as well. Yeah. Very good. Um, okay, so the only other one that's worth mentioning, Ryan, is just under settings here. Um, one thing that won't come across are custom document templates. So if you do have custom templates in here, you can see that in this demo account, we have quite a few custom document templates. So if you're using custom invoices or custom quotes, if you go into each of these uh, particular documents, if a document has been uploaded, you'll be able to see that here and you can download those documents. In the new world, when we finish that migration, you can then go and upload all of those documents against those particular template placeholders that will come through. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll show you that as well, but that's an area that you want to download those document templates so you're able to re-upload yeah. them on the other side. And the good news, of course, is with those document templates, in the spirit of keeping things as familiar as possible, you won't have to change any of the details within the document. So all those merge fields and naming conventions, all the same. Yeah. So it is quite simply a download exercise and then a re-upload exercise on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Ryan, let's um, let's flick over to uh, the actual uh, new product. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to sign up for an account. So I'm going to go and do this. Now, for the sake of the demo today for migration, I'm actually going to sign up as a, a new customer. Um, for all intents and purposes, these workflows will be the same. Um, one of them, you'll just be using your existing Workflow Max by Zero email address. Yeah. For this one, I'm going to specify a different email address. So I'm going to go through that new customer workflow. So we'll fill in some details here and just going to put this in. 
and we'll call this uh, customer webinar. And what I'm going to do is because we did another customer webinar this morning, I'm just going to type in uh, 7 uh, 8 p.m. slash 2 so we know the time here so I don't get mixed up with all the other accounts that we've got. And I'm going to agree to the terms of use and we'll create that account. Uh, we'll choose our time zone, select the number of users, choose an industry, and away we go. Now, that's going to get sent off. Uh, it's going to send an email to my inbox. Um, while I'm doing that to get the account up here to uh, you know, allow me access into that account, Brian, I might just flick it back to you with just the slides just to go over some of the key points from migration, just to recap uh, what we spoke about there, if that's okay. So oh, absolutely. I'll just switch that back over. And you can just go and let the team know about those key points just yeah. to recap on them. Perfect. Oh, there we go. We've got the cue card as well. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. So uh, so as we might recall, again, retracing some of the steps, uh, the migration period is quite open. It's 21 February until 26th of June. So what we want to stress is don't feel like you have to rush in and be first, although we'd love for you to come across as soon as, you, as, soon as you're ready. Uh, but don't feel like it's an absolute mad rush. There is plenty of time. Uh, we think it's highly important to consider and develop a plan uh, and most importantly, communicate that with your team. It probably won't surprise many of you to hear that in, in the many conversations we've had, um, the Friday afternoon down tools consideration is very popular. Uh, the ability to run the migration over the weekend, to get it prepared for Monday morning, of course. Um, but uh, in doing so, uh, do recall, do keep in mind that the person who instigates or a team member that instigates the migration will need API access privileges as well as that administrator. Now, for some of you, you will have had an account managed by an accountant or a bookkeeper or what we describe as one of our certified partners. Uh, never fear, they too are going to be able to help you in the, uh, the actual migration process. If that is the case, do make sure you reach out or re-establish your connections and develop a plan with them that makes sense for you. But either way, in the new world, what we are highly recommending is it'll be your ownership of the subscription, your credit card on the file, but very importantly, and I think we just brushed over it in the actual uh, account sign up, mm -hmm. there is a drop down there for you to select who your lead advisor is, uh, whether it's an implementation partner or a certified advisor, we would love for you to select who they are. It's, it's completely optional, of course, but select who they are. And uh, what that allows for is in the future, your advisor to be able to access your account. And here's a, here's a nice little um, uh, value add, if you will. We're no longer going to sting you for having to save a user account, a paid user account for their access. It's now free for them to get access, of course, so long as you denote them as your lead advisor. Yep. Now, um, we are just about ready to go. There is one last point that I'll quickly make mention of, um, migration timing. Now, the worst, oh, sorry, the expectation rather that we are setting is to allow for up to 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Now, that will be variable, and that is because some accounts have monstrous loads of data and documents in there. Some have been there, as Galti said, since 15 years ago with literally hundreds and thousands of lines of uh, timesheet data. Uh, but never fear, we're saying 24 hours and the good news is, and we'll jump into this in just a second, mm -hmm. you don't have to stick around and sit around by your computer the whole time. So rest assured, uh, even if you shut down your computer, even if you walk away, no stress. Once we start the migration process, it's going to continue to run anyway in the background. Yeah. And the good news is, of course, we'll make life easier for you. We'll send you a notification once it's done, and that'll be your invitation to come back in. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's actually show it in practicality. Yeah, let's do it. That will, that will help get the, uh, the awareness. Okay. Um, let me just switch back my screen share here. Sorry, everyone. We've got a few screens in the room. So just <laughs> want to make sure that everyone can see what we're doing. Um, okay, now let's see if we can flip back over to that account. Okay, give me a thumbs up emoji if everyone can see that. Hopefully you can. Um, all right, so I'm in that uh, new customer webinar account we've created, and I'm on that migration page. 
Now, one thing just to let everyone know is if you sign up as an existing customer, um, you will get a banner across the top of your account that says migrate now at any time. So don't worry, it'll be very easy to find how you migrate across. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a 14 day free trial. So you can use it for 14 days, spin up some dummy jobs, do what you need to do to feel comfortable and then facilitate that migration. Or you can migrate over from day one, um, you know, feel free to do mm -hmm. so. So there's a few, a, a, a fair bit of information here just about the migration. If you click on this ready to start button, you're gonna get this prompt that you need to acknowledge a few things about the migration. Um, that first one is that when you migrate the data from your existing account into the new one, it's going to delete anything and clear out this trial you've just spun up. So if you do trial and you spin up some jobs and tasks and costs, you have to be aware that all of that will get blown away and replaced by your existing data once you're ready to go. Um, you can't use this existing account while the migration is in process. Um, so while that's actually progressing, you'll see our menu will disappear. I can't really do much at that time, but as Ryan said, that's okay. You can close it down, let it be. Um, once you've triggered it, it's going to happen. Um, if you cancel that migration at any time, there's a big red cancel button. If you do that, um, nothing's going to get brought into the account. It'll just go back to that original free trial state with nothing in there. Um, the data entered into your existing account after you've started, that's not going to come through. So, you know, you don't want your staff or your team to continue using that old account after you've actually triggered this. Um, what's going to happen is Zero is going to package up that data on their side and send it over to us, and we're going to bring it in. So anything that they do after that point, we're not going to have access to it. Um, and the last one there is just that admin and API access permissions. You need to make sure the account you have has, um, has ticked those off. So we'll click that continue button. We've got a couple steps here. It's let's connect to that Zero account, the existing one, Workflow Max by Zero. The migration is going to take place, and then you can go and invite your team into the account. Um, so we'll do that and we'll talk about some of those things that um, you can expect to see here. So if I click log into my Workflow Max by Zero account, it's going to prompt me with that Zero login screen. There we go. That's populated for me with the account I'm going to use for the purposes of choosing an account. So I'm going to log in here and that will prompt me for my trusty two-factor authentication. And so we'll just go and find this and enter that in. Go with us there Good to be secure. We'll confirm that. And then what's going to happen is Zero is going to display a list of the workflow max accounts I have access to. Uh, for a lot of you, this might simply be one account. For some of you, you might have a drop down with several. Um, in this example, I've already connected two accounts that I want to use for the purpose of the demo. So I don't need to choose anything. I'm just going to continue with those two accounts I've already authenticated. So I'll go ahead and continue, or you choose that one from the list and click continue. And it's going to bring us back into the new application. We're going to choose for the sake of today's demo. We're going to use that Blue Rock Digital demo account. We're going to migrate all that data across um, into this new account here. And we're going to click on that start migration button. Mm. And I guess uh, just a little a bit of context and backstory on Blue Rock Digital, the account that we're actually transitioning at the moment, mm. uh, just to give you a bit of a flavor for the size yeah. of it. So we're talking about five uh, five plus years of operation. Yeah, I think six or seven now. Six or so seven, there yeah. you go, I stand corrected. <laughs> and um, it's it's got a, oh, I guess in the grand scheme of things, a, like a, a middle uh, and, and middle of the volume, volume. yeah, middle band. So yeah. this isn't the biggest, but it certainly isn't the smallest. Somewhere That's, in the middle. Yeah, it's um, you know, at, at the end of the day, this is an account that we've used for demos for potential Workflow Max customers. Mm -hmm. You know, over the past, I think it might even be seven or eight years, Ryan, at this stage. So yeah, um, it's an account that we've used. There's uh, quite a bit of information in there, a couple thousand jobs. You'll see once this kicks into de into gear, how much uh, data is actually part of each of those different steps as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and looking on screen at the moment, you know, you might be looking at this going migration in progress, 0%. <laughs> Guys, is this working? What's going on? Uh, we promise there is something happening in the background right now. So um, what we're actually doing is we're sending that request over to zero. And again, depending on the size of the account, it can take a while for them to package up all of that data that's in your account. Yeah. Um, and also bear in mind that a lot of accounts have um, quite a few documents that have yeah. been uploaded. We've yeah. seen some with tens of thousands of documents over the years that have been packaged up. You can see that's now going and the migration is, um, is has started, which is great.
Um, but yeah, there's, there's potentially some accounts that have tens of thousands of documents. So yeah. all of those need to get packaged up and compressed and sent over to us so that we can start pulling them through. And you can see that depending on which part of the migration it's at, um, it's going relatively quickly. You know, we're already at that 25% mark. Um, now, of course, at the moment, we only have one account migrating, as far as we're aware. <laughs> Hopefully, it's just the one right now. Um, but yeah. when we do go live, you know, we are expecting there to be, uh, you know, potentially 100 or 200 going at the same time, right? So we need to make sure that we've got enough uh, infrastructure and bandwidth to be able to, you know, suck across multiple accounts at the same time. Yeah. Um, so that's why you're probably seeing it go at the speed that it is right now. Yeah. Um, again, as Ryan said, uh, you know, we, um, we, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we've got, we've got enough, enough bandwidth here to support all those migrations and it could take up to 24 hours, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. that's one thing just to set the expectation. They probably won't all be quite this fast on the day. Um, but yeah, just to show you if it was just one going at a particular time, it could be going at quite the, quite the clip as you see, as we sort of scroll through what's actually coming across here. I might just jump in and just reassure everyone mm. uh, listening in here. We do have the infrastructure and the ability to really scale up as mm. well as we need it. So rest assured, even though the queue might be quite large at times, um, yes, allow for that 24 hour expectation. It will get through just fine. And that's, that's what we're um, really comf comfortable and confident in, which is yeah. great. Yeah, that's right. And I think there you go. You can see it's 2000 jobs. It's blitz through pretty quickly. So, you know, if you've got an account that you've got around that size, you can see yeah. that's roughly how quickly it would go uh, yeah. depending on the numbers that are going at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then also, I guess, just in terms of going through this, uh, as we mentioned before, if you've triggered the migration, um, you don't have to sit here and watch, no. watch the page as it goes through. Um, you know, if you shut down your computer or you, you, you leave or you go to sleep for the night and you just do it overnight, mm -hmm. um, as soon as you start this, as soon as you click that start migration button, um, this is going to happen. So yeah, you don't have to worry about keeping the page up or anything like that. You can close it, log out. Um, when you log back in, um, you're going to hopefully see this has completed successfully and see some of that detail. Um, that's the other thing that you will have. There's one, we've got a job comment that's that's failed as part of migration. So we will show you what happens there or what that means. Um, but you will be able to actually come back and see a log of all of these things as well, of what's gone through successfully, you know, where there might have been issues, what's happened. Um, we've noticed a fair few challenging things in there, like for some of the custom fields that you might have in your accounts. Um, we've seen some funny ones with a combination of characters. So, or you know, characters. apostrophes or yeah. dashes in, in custom fields, things like that, where they, they happen to line up consecutively, mm -hmm. which is, you know, caused us some fun with our code that we're writing. Mm. Um, so seeing the combination of different special characters there uh, is just something that, you know, we may not have encountered. So we'll just make provisions for that yeah. and make sure we update the code and we can redeploy that migration tool yeah. very quickly. So we can run it again. Um, have another go and that that data yeah. will often be sucked in. So that's what yeah. we're doing at the moment. We're putting it through its paces, trying all sorts of weird and wonderful combinations of things just to make sure we're going to get every last 1%. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah. So we're, we're trying our best to, to catch all of those as early as we can. Yep. Um, but yeah, you can see the, the pace that it's going. So this will be a big one here with our custom fields. We've got quite a few custom fields populated in different areas as yeah. it gets going. Uh, we do have a question. We might like quickly chime in on that one. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do you need to have a certain speed of connection to be able to run the migration? Mm -hmm. um, the good news is we take care of all of the processing uh, requirements behind the scenes. So the answer is no. Any standard internet connection is really going to be more than fine. Uh, put it this way, if you can access Xero, if you can access Workflow Max, that's going to be more than suitable for um, for what we're what we're doing for you. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, just to, and just to go further on that one, Ryan, your internet speed will have no impact on the speed of this migration. Correct. And that is all of our infrastructure in the background doing the hard work here. Yep. So all you need to do is be able to log in and get into that account and, and trigger it. Um, and if you can do that, then, you know, this migration will go at the speed that we allow it to with the infrastructure that we have. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So this custom field one's going to take a, a minute or two longer, but you can see as well, going back up to the top here, what are we at, Ryan? What do you think? 80% of the way through. Um, so we're almost there, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, 
once we get down to the bottom, you can see those last ones are around our purchase orders or purchase receipts, bills, uh, invoices on the jobs. And then down the bottom, that's where we've got our files. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we talked about as well, just a bit earlier with some businesses might have a couple thousand files, which could take a bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, in this demo account, uh, we don't have a whole heap. So those should go through pretty quickly there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, to answer some of the questions that we see coming through on Q&A, you know, your documents and notes will also be migrated across. Yep. Um, so those are there. Uh, if you do use a, um, a document management system that's connected in, so some of you might have Google Drive or Dropbox connected at the moment, um, you will need to re-authenticate and re-authorize those integrations. So when you get into the new platform, you just go to that integrations tab, put in your details, and those will be reintegrated. Um, so just like you would do with zero, if you're going to reconnect zero to your account, mm -hmm. um, you just need to log in again and that will be reconnected. So it yeah. shouldn't be too tedious for you. Go to that integrations page, reconnect what you are using and, and you'll be good to go there. Yeah. Now there is another question there on custom reports and, and it has been called out. And yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, you will need to regenerate or reconfigure your custom reports. Now, we might just take the opportunity to talk about that now, but we'll show you how to do it in a moment. Yep. Uh, so I guess fundamentally we have um, overhauled the actual custom reporting engine behind the scenes. Yep. And I guess crudely what that means is we've actually got an apples for oranges comparison from the old world to the new, which means you won't, or simply put, the old configuration just won't fit as part of the new look and feel. But in saying that, um, there is a bit of a silver lining in this. Uh, by figuratively taking a step back and having to rebuild, you're actually going to be able to take two steps forward. Um, the customer reporting engine is more uh, is far more superior when it comes to performance. You're getting extra filtering capability and dynamic filtering in actual reports. There's a whole lot more to it. But um, one element that I will uh, share as a means of setting expectations the look and feel of the report builder is kept familiar for now, but of course we'll we'll use the opportunity or we'll take the opportunity to advance that very quickly further down uh, post go live. But uh, again, we'll we'll take you through it as part of the actual on the other side uh, process. Yep, um, and something to look forward to. As yeah, well. that's right. I mean, it's a good opportunity, Ryan. I think we've seen so many custom reports in existing Workflow Max accounts mm. that have been generated. Uh, you know, particularly for filtered values. Yeah. So, for example, I might have a job report, and it's for a particular client. Yeah. And I have the same job report duplicated for another client. Um, and so we've seen a lot of that duplication where, you know, we'll see once we get live in a couple of weeks time and into March, April, May, June, hmm. as we approach that sunset date, you know, the, that, that dynamic filtering that we have in custom reporting will really improve hmm. and you'll be able to sort of have one report that you can have several yep. views or filters on. Yep. Um, so you don't have to clog up as much of that custom reporting space as you did in the past. Yeah, correct. Um, so that's 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 one that we can look forward to. And it's a great opportunity to spring clean and go, which reports are we actually yeah. using? You know, some accounts have that legacy of, you know, a whole bunch of different reports. So you can sort of start fresh and say, okay, well, what are we actually using on a regular yeah. basis? And, yeah. you know, another extension to that that we will look to get to in time is about scheduled reports. Um, so we know how valuable that would be to be able to, Monday morning, send through a timesheet report to particular admin users in the accounts or, you know, Friday afternoon, productivity, productivity yep. summary, something like that, right? Yeah. So this new reporting engine that we've built will allow us to do some fun things in terms of the features that will come in the next, you know, few months ahead or the by the end of 2024, Absolutely. right? So um, that's, a, that's a, a fun one to look forward yeah. to. Um, I should say, though, at the other end of the spectrum, for those who just simply want to recreate what was, a nice little tidbit or, or, or um, approach for you would even be just to have both old Workflow Max and new Workflow Max open side by side on different windows. And you can go through the very similar process of you know uh, going through the report builder and copying and getting that like for like. So yes, of course, the opportunity is to advance it and get better reports. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you just want a status quo as a, as a way of getting across and just getting settled, uh, that too is a very viable option as well. Yeah, absolutely. And to answer a couple other questions that have come through, Ryan, um, this is pulling through archived information as well right. uh, for the purposes of us remapping that historical information. Um, so you will see if you had clients that you've archived, you'll have the same archived clients in the new account. Um, so that will that will be there as part of it. Yeah. Um, and someone else has asked about clarity for document templates and documents. 
Um, so the documents you have uploaded against jobs and clients and suppliers, those documents will come through, but your custom document templates that you might use for quotes and invoices that you use to produce uh, those documents to then send off to your clients, yeah. those are the ones that you need to download and re-upload. Yeah. Also referred to as custom print templates custom as well. Custom print templates, that's yeah. right. So, yeah, a bit of a mix of terminology there. Yep. Uh, now for them, oh, there's another question since we're just waiting for the migration to finish up. Um, can we pull data for one to two accounts to test the system? Now I'm going to take an assumption you're talking about uh, a contained uh, amount of data to bring across for testing. Um, in actual fact, and just to clarify, it is all or nothing essentially. So we will package up everything that's in your existing account from the beginning of time, so to speak all the way up until that point in time. So, uh, and look, truth be told, and for those that join us in very early webinars, originally we did have this idea of giving you the ability to filter on data before migrating, but we'll just be honest here, that opens up a whole wild mix of complexities and risks. So we thought it would be much more easier and safer to simply package it all up, bring it across. But of course, in the new world, you will have the ability to leverage some more of the bulk action tools, which will be a much easier interface for you to clean up the data and get it more ship shape for the for the for the new workflow max by Blurop. Yeah, that's right. And I think you know, there's we've got some bulk selection in there where you can bulk delete or bulk archive, which might be a little bit easier than it is today. So yeah. by all means, you can do a bit of a spring cleaning exercise or review and clear out some of that in time. Yeah. Um, Someone's asked the question as well, can we run both systems in parallel? Um, you absolutely can. Um, that, that subscription in the old world will continue um, and your new, your new product uh, subscription will be there. You'll have that 14-day trial and then you'll need to subscribe. Um, but you can continue to run both in parallel until you're comfortable and then you can go and cancel that Workflow Max by Zero subscription uh, and continue on in, in the new product. Um, so yeah, you absolutely can if you'd like to, um, you know, do that as well. And in on the zero side, um, you can export all data if you need to. Hmm. Um, okay, so might pause on some Q and A yeah, yeah. because uh, we've got a, a nice update there. Yeah, so that migration's completed there, and we can see there was that one job comment. I'm going to skip over that just for the moment. It was just one, so I think we've done pretty well there. Um, and let's just have a look, Ryan, over at our jobs and make sure that's looking okay. Yeah, I can see that that's sort of come through all right. So we can see we've got those 1,814 jobs there. Mm -hmm. um, we've got 1,700 sort of overdue. I think um, there are some, I guess, differences in yeah. how we show and display sort of those overarching numbers mm. versus what Workflow Max by Zero has as well, right? Yeah. So, um, things like ad hoc jobs, for example, yeah. um, those are counted in our numbers, yeah. but they're not in Workflow Max by Zero, right? So when you're looking at that 1,814, for those of you that have Workflow Max Premium, you might have some ad hoc jobs that are now included in that total. So yeah. um, we will be sending through as much documentation as we have so you can easily compare these and go, oh, no, that is yeah. correct. That is what yeah. should be showing. Yeah, and just give everyone confidence. Um, Fundamentally, it's the same data. It's just a different lens of how we present it. Just slight nuances, same, same, but different. Um, something that we believe to be a lot more um, conducive to the way we want to operate the, the, the solution and give you better cues and clues for, for your day-to-day -day operation as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing there as well, Ryan, is just probably the notion of quotes. So we've got 827 that have come across. I think if I flick back over, if we just go back over to this account, we've just migrated. Um, what we should see is if we go into the quote section in our old account, if that loads up for us, give it a second. The speed on this one isn't our fault, by the way. <laughs> so 257 we've yeah. got in all quotes, right? But as we know in Workflow Max by zero, we've got this archived quotes notion. Yeah. And so if we scroll down to the bottom, I think it's down here, we've got 570. So that total of our archived quotes here, um, you know, that total with all, if we flick back again, that should line up to that 827 that, whoops, sorry, but uh, flip back over there. Um, that should line up to that 827 that we have. Um, so when we're looking at what's migrated, it's just really important to understand how we're actually presenting some of that data. Um, the other notion there is around sort of expired quotes. Um, so in Workflow Max by Zero, um, those don't sort of hit that expired pile. They sit in active still yep. um, because they don't sort of automatically expire there, which is why our active quotes is actually lower on this side. Mm. Um, but when you look at the, the total of those numbers, it should, should equal mm. that, that total there, which we can yeah. see. 
Um, okay. Now, I don't want to take away from uh, the, the importance of reconciling and getting the numbers right, but I am that's a bit of a stickler for time. So. Sure, sure. I'm just going to run. I've lost our slide here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get us back into there we go. where we were here. And I just want to make sure we're on the right spot here for our notes to go through. Perfect. Um, and the other thing I want to just show everyone with this migration is just having a look at settings. Yeah. Um, so all of those settings as well um, will come across as part of your existing account. Um, so you can see all of that data you're used to seeing in your old account will come through um, exactly as it is today. And, um, you know, whip, whip information as well, whip lock dates, you know, all those, all those different things that you've got, payment terms. Um, what we spoke about before under print templates, those, those document templates I refer to them as. Mm -hmm. um, these custom print templates, as we can see, they've all come through into this new account, but they won't have the actual document uploaded against them. So if I click into that particular print template, you can see the name of it. We can see information but you're going to need to go and click and upload and add that document back into uh, Workflow Max by Blue Rock. Yep. So if I you know, click on this button, for example, I can simply navigate to that particular uh, you know, invoice template. I can open it up, add it in there. Great, it's attached now. I can save that. And those merge fields, as Ryan said, will, will work the same way. I think I forgot my date format. Needed to add that in as well once I do that properly. Um, and then I upload this. Let's do that again yep. just to demonstrate it. Um, we should be able to save that and actually upload it against the document. So then we're good to go for that particular invoice template. Yeah. Um, okay. So once we've done that as well, with respect to our document templates, oh, it's cleared everything else that I've done. If we flick back over to general settings, um, we can have a look at staff. Um, so that's another one just to reference is, I guess, reinviting your users to the account. Mm -hmm. um, so when they all come through here, you can see at the moment, we've actually got invite pending. That will actually be replaced. That text is just a placeholder for us at the moment. That's going to be replaced with uh, no invite sent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no invites will be sent for anyone in here. It'll say no invite sent just to make it really clear to you that no, they haven't actually been invited. We've migrated them across with all the mm. permissions and everything with uh, you know billable rates, base rates, all that's cool coming there. through. Yep. Um, however, you can go and invite them into the new account at any time that you'd like. Yeah. So you can go and tick them off in here. I can select a few people and I can go ahead and resend that invite. Um, I can do that for one person. I can do that for the whole account. Yep. Um, whatever you're comfortable with. If you want a few people from your team to come in and review the data that's in there, that's fine. Um, or you can go and just reinvite everyone um, and hit that resend invite button. They'll get an email in their inbox. It's going to ask them to set up the password for their new Workflow Max by Blue Rock account. Um, and they can go through sort of that mm -hmm. sign up process and they can log in and continue on as they were. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we should call out that there is one key difference. We have actually mandated for all users of Workflow Max by Blue Rock uh, MFA or multi-factor authentication. Yep. Now, um, some might say, yes, that's a bit of a pain in the neck. We get it. But in this day and age of cybersecurity issues uh, arrive, uh, we think this is the absolute minimum standard. So we are going to mandate it or enforce it as part of every user uh, subscription. Now, uh, when, when accessing the MFA, there'll be lots of cues on how to get that set up. And of course, you can use all of your favorite authenticator apps, whether it's Google, Microsoft, or otherwise. Yep. So we'd like to think it's a pretty simple operation. And uh, But ultimately, once they've gone through that process, they'll then immediately be taken to the new workflow, Max by Blue Rock, and ready to get started. Oh, there you go. And so I, I think one other thing, Ryan, there is if you get stuck at any point in time, we've got this green uh, question mark icon for help. You can click on that at any time. You've got a, the ability to contact support from here. Um, you can go to our help center. We're trying to get all of that documentation updated, um, show you what's new. You can take a guided tour in the new product. You'll be able to click on certain things that are highlighted. Yeah. Um, we've got some previous webinars. If you want to listen to Ryan and I continue on talking away, you can do that. <laughs> or, or not, you can just continue going in there. Yeah. Um, and we've got some FAQs as well with, with common questions, right? So yeah. that's pinned on every page, that question mark uh, for easy access. Yeah. Um, if you do need to update any staff members' details as well, you can always go into that particular staff member. Um, you can edit edit their information before you resend the invite. Uh, maybe their email address has changed. You can go ahead and edit, edit that information as well um, and, and resend the invite after you've done that and had a look at um, you know, things like permissions. Yeah. Um, so that's another area that permissions will have brought across um, as they were. Yeah. Um, we have the concept of roles now going forward. If you want to create um, predefined roles for your different team members, you can absolutely do that. Apply those roles to uh, you know, the existing staff members or new staff members as you go. Yeah.
Um, so that's another area that um, you can definitely have a look at. Very good. Um, one thing, Ryan, I will very quickly do now is just we'll have a look at reports. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spin up a quick custom report. There might be users out there going, oh, should we compare anything? You absolutely can um, you know, create a quick report and just do a comparison for your own sanity um, just to make sure things have come across okay. Um, you know, if I go and do a job report here uh, and we go and look at job, uh, I can go and populate this information. So uh, if we go in here, what we'll do is we've made this searchable as well in here just to save you the time uh, for putting these custom reports together. So hopefully it's a bit easier to use. And you can multi-select so you don't have to add them one at a time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those of you who are familiar with custom reports know that they can be a little bit tedious. So we have tried to make that uh, a bit more seamless going forward. Um, so let's just check in some build world actual costs. I think that'll do us for now, Ryan. Right? Uh, let's just check in a date range here. Let's just go 1st of Jan uh, to... December, that'll be my start date. And let's generate that and see if anything comes up for us. Yeah, okay. And so we can see, you know, we've got uh, some of that data that's pulled through uh, for each of our clients here with billable actual costs. Um, so this might be an exercise that you go through after you've done migration. You can basically spin up a custom report in here for your jobs, use whichever fields that you'd like. And you can see in the reports here, you know, we can go through and just double check and go, okay, is this information the same? So you could spin up a similar custom report in the existing product mm. for the purpose of time. We just won't go through that exercise and compare every field, mm. um, but you can do that by all means, just to make sure that things have, have come across as you expect yep. um, and away you go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We might do a quick little speedy visit of the uh, collaboration tool setup. Sure. As well as the uh, third-party integration. Yeah, yeah, good shout, Ryan. So um, one thing there is just on Collaboration Manager. So it is no longer sitting under that Jobs tab. So it's up here with this little envelope icon there. Uh, so that's where Collaboration Manager will live going forward. You can pop this open on any screen. So if you're looking at a job or you've emailed in, you don't have to leave where you are. You can slide this open, and then you can allocate any of those emails and attachments from this screen, tick them off, and say it goes mm. to this job or this lead or this quote. Um, to reconfigure this going forward, you can click from it there and click configure. Um, it's also available from the settings. Some of you might have might have noticed that before. It's just at the bottom of that general settings page. You've got that link to collaboration manager. So I can go ahead in here and set up a particular email. If I type something in, uh, I can go and set up that new uh, email address, for example. Uh, and the only thing to note here that's a bit different is that that, uh, that suffix, that URL, that domain has changed. Um, so that's no longer email my job. Um, that is now email workflow max. Mm. Um, okay, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. If you are using Collaboration Manager, that email address will will update as well. Yes. Um, okay, and then, sorry, Ryan, there's one more that I need to mention. Integrations, thank you very much. So integrations page here, um, we'll have a list of all our integrations. This isn't complete yet. There's a few more that we need to add into the mix that you're used to seeing today. Um, so you can go into here and set up any of those integrations that you're used to using already today. So for example, if we clicked on uh, set up integration for zero, you're gonna hit that zero login page and you'll wanna go and actually uh, put in those zero details and re-authenticate and authorize uh, your zero account. Okay. Um, okay, so that's probably it in terms of the setup in there. This is actually gonna bring me to zero now that I've clicked this. So that's <laughs> enough. Um, but that's probably it in terms of migration and sort of what's come across. Hopefully that's given everyone, you know, a bit of confidence in terms of that migration process and what you need yeah. to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably it from there. I think we've got a few more slides we want to cover off and I do want to save us some time. Absolutely. Right? Okay, so, so let's quickly fly through these back next slides. slides. Um, yeah. So this is just a reminder. We've gone to a great lengths to document all of this. Workflowmax2.com slash migration made easy. There's a free guide. Oh, there's, the there's the lights. So it must be after hours. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, don't worry. It's not the power bill. And uh, we've actually got some training materials, some guides. But very importantly, we've also got access to our customer support team, our customer success team, and uh, as part of the slide uh, follow-up that we'll share with you post-webinar, you're actually going to hear from our Head of Customer Success, Kaya, who's prepared a quick video that talks you through all that's on offer by way of resources and access to team. 
Um, we better keep flying though. Yeah. Um, just some product updates, Ryan. I think we will just go through these ever so quickly. So ready for our go live uh, in a couple of weeks time, everyone. I'm not going to read through each of these on screen, but um, the core functionality that you know and use today from jobs to, uh, you know, your clients and contacts, quoting, purchases, invoicing, custom fields, uh, your settings, the API, we've replicated it. So if you have custom integrations, you can continue yeah. to use those. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term API, it's just a way for others to connect their apps mm. into the Workflow Max by Blue Rock product. Yes. Um, of course, that migration tool is going to be ready as you saw it demonstrated today. Um, there are a few intricacies that aren't quite there for us just yet. Um, you know, bearing in mind, we've been up against it in terms of our timeline here, but we will get there and we are striving to replicate that existing functionality that you see today. So don't get deterred if you're going, oh, but I, I don't quite have that thing there yet. We will get there. Mm. Um, it just may take us a few more weeks to, to get those yeah. last bits and pieces over the line. Yeah. Um, to which point, we've actually included dy a dynamic link here. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't normal of a tech company, I assure you. But we're, we're hoping to keep this as open and as transparent as possible. So there's a live link to a Google Sheet where we're going to keep you updated in real time with all of our developments and more, more specifically in relation to what's coming post-launch. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we know this is a critical piece and might actually impact your preferred timing for, for migration. So follow the link, shout out if you have any questions or concerns, but this will help you to get, get planned and ready for what's to come. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, Ryan, so we'll, we'll keep moving there. I think at this stage, given we've got sort of 10 minutes to go, um, in terms of making the most of the trial period, you know, I think we've spoken a lot about this. It's really about testing, check a couple of products in parallel, a couple of projects rather. Yep. Um, you can run that migration a couple of times. Um, if you need extra help, we've got that partner community there. Yeah. Absolutely. And just on that, because I noticed there was one question. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to connect to one of our highly valued certified partners for whether it's a more of a premium support, a white glove support, or or even having the opportunity to do the migration and see what else can be better yielded from your investment in Workflow Max, um, you can either go to our workflowmax2.com partner directory or connect with me. I, I do, uh, after all, head up uh, the partnership team and uh, I'll be very happy to do some matchmaking and work out who's the right partner for you. Yeah. Um, excellent. Okay. Um, I think with that being said, Ryan, we've got some sport and training uh, resources. We'll flick that through as part of the... Oh, I've, I've, oh sorry. I've been told <laughs> our LinkedIn page, we're putting a lot of effort yeah. into the communications there uh, to keep you really up to date with product feature developments, uh, news from our mm -hmm. partnership channel, even from existing customers. So please, if, if you don't mind, feel, uh, feel more than welcome to connect with us through there and uh, keep up to date for latest and greatest. Yeah, good chat. Um, okay. Q and a. Let's jump into Q&A. There's a few questions we can yeah. see that are piling in there. So I'm just going to yeah. call out that there are a few and there is, uh, I don't think any possible way we're going to be able to do all of them. Forgive us if we don't get to yours, but we'll attempt to do as many as we possibly can. Yep. Okay. I'm going to take us away there, Ryan. Okay. So if I migrate, I can still work on the old Workflow Max and the new Workflow Max together. And then when I'm happy, I can migrate again. Yes, that's absolutely correct. So uh, this will really boil down to your own internal planning, how you communicate that to team and uh, how you want to structure it from a timing perspective. I'll give you a typical use case that I'm hearing from a lot of client, uh, customers, I was going to say clients. Uh, many have described getting to 5 p.m. Friday afternoon, sending a communication to the team, down tools, and uh, then starting the whole migration process and using the weekend to facilitate it and be ready for Monday morning. Mm. But by the same token, if you would rather take more time to test, uh, validate, get people ac accustomed with the new solution, yep. you can actually run both in parallel. That's absolutely fine. A little caveat there, of course, you're not gonna integrate the new Workflow Max by Blue Rock to zero, for example, because of course we're going to keep that, uh, maintain that connection with the old platform uh, for the meantime. But when you're ready to do the ultimate go live migration, um, that's when you will inform your team. Of course, keep in mind that all data put into the trial will be wiped clean to, so, sorry, will be removed to wipe the site clean for that next migration. And then you can continue on from there. Yep. 
Good, exactly. Okay. Um, quick rapid fire from me, Ryan. I've just scrolled through and seen a few. Pricing structure, have you guys released it? Yes, pricing remains the same as it is at the moment. So no no need to worry about pricing. Um, it's the same as it is today. Correct. Um, with respect to API documentation, um, someone's asked for that. Uh, you can email support at workflowmax2.com and we'll send you the link to it. Uh, we'll also be publishing that link very shortly on our website. It might yeah. be there in the next day or two. Yeah. Um, the dates for each of the features after go live. Um, yeah, look, we're looking to to put that in that Google Sheet document um, around go live. You know, uh, we need to we need to be pretty responsive if anything pops up that we need to jump to. So we will have a bit of a period there where we're just addressing any feedback after go live. Um, but those critical features that we want to release are uh, custom notifications there, uh, job and staff scheduling, yeah. um, as well as sort of mobile optimized views to simulate the mobile app that you've got today. Might also add a couple of uh, key integrations as well that we'll be building to help you know, give you that extra, extra extension and capability. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, excellent. So there's a question around um, having more than one live quote. Um, yeah, look, it's come up a lot uh, for, for us in terms of variations. At the moment, we have kept that functionality the same, um, but please bear with us because there will be plenty of improvements coming in that space to be able to offer variations, not just have that one master quote. It is going to be like that for Go Live. But that's one that has been requested uh, quite significantly on our feature request forum. Yeah. And um, if you haven't seen the feature request forum, you can go to our website and uh, navigate to the feature request forum from there. Yeah. Um, there's over you know 1,500 feature requests now, and variations are having multiple quotes or uh, you know anything like that. No matter what industry you're in, is a very common one. So we want to allow for that. Yeah. Um, it's just going to take us a few more months to get to that point um, to allow you to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, that was a good question. Uh, so will the new world have the same type of dashboard or, sorry, you scrolled off, <laughs> or does the new world dashboard offer better visibility? We're really excited about this one. So we know that the existing dashboards are a bit, let's call it archaic for the moment. Um, but in the new world, you're going to have more of a, a, a widget, a widgetized approach. Is that a, word, a good word? Widgetized. I'll take it. So lots of uh, lots of modules that will give you lots of the visual uh, performance indicators, but also by way of user experience, we've grouped all of those key task items into a simple dropdown. So it's going to be a whole lot more visual, a whole lot more insightful, and a whole lot easier to use. Now, rest assured. Uh, with the widgets, you can only see them if you have the permission to see them based on your role. Uh, so don't stress uh, from a profitability standpoint, we get it. Sometimes you don't want to expose that kind of detail. Um, that can keep restrained based on that role. Furthermore, we have actually included into the jobs an actual banner up the top. Shame we didn't get to show it to you today. But there's actually some, again, visualizations that help you understand real-time performance of the job, um, which is a, a, a new feature of, of the solution. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a question around, can multiple users be invited for the trial? Absolutely. And uh, once yep. you start that trial in your account, you can invite as many users as you'd like. Um, there's another question around, integrating zero to both products at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly possible. Um, there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing this. Um, zero can be integrated to the Workflow Max by Zero product and then to our product as well. Mm -hmm. um, probably wouldn't recommend it just in case it creates any sort of out of sync issues between yeah. a couple of different products you've got integrated there. But in theory, if you are, you know, authorizing an invoice in the Workflow Max by Blue Rock product, mm. that's going to sync over to zero. Yeah. Um, if you authorize one in Workflow Max by zero and you authorize that invoice there, that's going to sync over to Workflow Max by zero. Mm. Um, so, you know, those both will be pushing into zero from two different places. So in theory, you can have them both connected at the same yeah. time, yeah. Um, but probably wouldn't recommend doing it uh, just to avoid any issues mm. with sort of trying to compare and what's come from where. This actually touches on a, an earlier question I noticed, mm -hmm. uh, the thought of using a zero trial account to connect as part of your testing and trialing with Workflow Max by Blue Rock. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's absolutely possible. You can connect to a, a demo company in yep. zero and yep. just have a look at how that integration is going to work. If you want to try that, you can authorize yep. some invoices, see that go over to your zero demo company. Yep. Um, and then by all means, you can disconnect zero just like you can today. Um, and then go and re-authenticate to your actual live account um, if you just want to test that out. So yeah. you can absolutely do that. Yeah, perfect. 
Um, I have noticed that just generally speaking, there's a few questions that kind of speak to um, uh, newer audiences coming to work for Max by Blue Rock. Um, if that is the case, uh, please feel welcome to go to our, our workflowmax2.com website. There's a great deal of material that speaks to the product features, the product functionality. There's also opportunity to connect with the team to learn more and uh, get prepared for, um, if you will, a, a new account in Workflow Max by Blue Rock. Yeah. Um, Brad, just noticed the time. We are oh, nine, we're there. Nine o'clock <laughs> time. Okay. Um, I think just to just to summarize here, a couple last questions. So during the trial period, all of your test data will be wiped when you migrate. That's correct. So anything you put into that trial account is going to get overridden when you do uh, migrate through. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few questions around the mobile phone app. Yep. Um, we didn't want to rush that. So uh, the mobile app will be coming. Um, we want to make it more extensive than the current mobile app that's on offer today. Those of you that are familiar with that, you know that it's essentially just about entering in timesheets. Um, in the interim, we are looking to release quite quickly some screens that are mobile optimized. So when you log into workflowmax2.com, you go to the app, um, you will see a mobile optimized version for sort of entering in timesheets to at least give people what they have today. So we're looking to get those out quite quickly after launch, but the mobile app, the proper one with a bit more sophistication yeah. and functionality will be coming. Yeah. So just to be really clear, all the same functionality in that mobile look and feel is the same. We yeah. will offer the exact same um, uh, uh, can, well, can, um, offer in terms of the availability. And so just a little tidbit for those that um, I might not know, you can actually save uh, an actual web link to your home on your phone. Mm -hmm. So for all intents and purposes, you're clicking a, an icon just like you would an app. It's just you're going through a web browser rather than an actual native app. Yeah, we probably should wrap we'll it up. We'll wrap it up there, okay. Ryan. <laughs> so, um, look, I'm just going to do a quick little uh, straw poll, if that's okay. <laughs> sure. uh, I, I didn't know that Zoom actually had this feature. Yeah. If you're feeling a lot better about life and more clear on uh, how this migration is going to play out, I'd love to get a quick little uh, thumbs up, uh, thumbs thumbs up, up emoji. Flag, just, <laughs> up just so we can get a, a quick indicator. Uh, there we go. we got a feel. Oh, perfect. Here, excellent. Right? Okay, excellent. Um, but uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for your, for your time and participation today. We know there's a lot of information there. Rest assured, there's a great deal of resources you can lean on. We've got a great, very capable team who are ready, willing to, to help and support along the way. You don't have to rush into it. There's plenty of time. But of course, we're going to be here ready and waiting for you when you are. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, 21st of Feb is the day, 13 days to go. Look forward to seeing you on the other side. Enjoy your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.